So we've got radioactive decay and half-life, and A is complete the equation showing alpha decay for radium-226. So what we know with these uh, equations of radioactive decay, there are conservation laws, there's conservation of mass number, conservation of atomic number. So uh, the alpha particle, uh, you could write it as, as HE, or you could write it as an alpha. Uh, I'm going to write it as an alpha just because I want to and uh, that has a mass number of 4 and an atomic number of 2. Um, 226 should be the sum of 4 plus whatever the Rn radon, I believe that is, uh, is. So uh, 4 plus 222 equals 226. And uh, the bottom number, the atomic number, um, 88, um, should equal the sum of this plus 2, so that's got to be 86. And that's that, nice and easy. B. Describe what is meant by the term half-life of a radioactive nuclide. Um, well, half-life is, uh, there's a symbol, it's the amount of time um, for, for half of um, that mass, uh, half the mass of that substance to undergo decay. Or you could call it, uh, because the um, count rate of radioactive um, emissions is proportional to the amount of mass of that substance remaining, you could also say it's the time for the count rate to, to decrease by half. Uh, so that's, that's an alternative way of looking at it. But you're basically defining half-life and of a radioactive nuclide. So and it's basically a statistical measure of um, when you would expect that radioactive nuclide to decay into its um, constituent components, I guess. Um, C. A Geiger counter is an instrument used to detect radiation. A Geiger counter detects 40 counts per second uh, from a sample of iodine-131. The half-life of iodine-131 is 8 days. So using the axes given below, sketch graph showing the count rate from the sample of iodine over a period of 24 days. Okay, so this is just plotting a graph. You could make a little table first if you like, um, or you could plot it, plot it as you go. But you know that uh, with the time um, at time zero, you're given a count rate, um, I'll just put C for count rate, of, what do we get, 40. And we know that decays by half after one half-life, which is eight days. Um, so after 16 days, it'll decay in half again to 10. And after 24 days, it'll decay in half again to 5. So these are the points we have to plot on our graph. Um, so at 0, we should have 40. At 8, we should have 20. At 16, we should have 10. And at 24, we should have 5. And then this is going to be tricky for me here, but it should have a smooth curve passing through those. Okay, fantastic. And what they'll be looking for on the schedule is that you've actually gone down by, by half um, of that 40 and then down by half again, just to, just to keep um, consistent and that you've accurately predicted the half-life. Okay, part uh, two. From the graph, de deduce the activity of the sample of iodine after 20 days. So this is not a complex one at all. You just have to go to the 20 days on your graph, which is here, and then you have to come across and find roughly where it intersects, and that tells you what the uh, the count rate is, the counts per second, which is the activity, so you're expected to know that. In this case it appears to be, uh, that's 5, that's 5 there, oops, on the middle one, 5, 10, so it's just going up 6, 7, that should be 8 counts per second. And that is Half-Life. And this is the Physics Lounge. Woohoo!